this is Fred Grace. Welcome to the show, man. I'm still a little bit amped up about my podcast that I had yesterday with uh, Jack from uh, the new acid test. So I'm going to leave a link in the description on that. But we're going to cover some more topics right here today. And we're going to cover uh, QAnon, the deep state, and military intelligence. Military intelligence. And we got Syria on the list and Nigeria and a little bit of Nibiru. So you're not going to want to miss it, man. And it'll be up right after this. All right, so these are some of the topics that's really hitting YouTube yesterday. Uh, we got the QAnon phenomenon rolling. And uh, I mean, everybody got their Q insight. Uh, but I'm going to bring it to you a different way because uh, QAnon, uh, he, apparently he's part of the deep state. Uh, but I just want to let you know the deep state is totally different from the shadow government. Okay, so let's get two things straight right now. The deep state, this QAnon phenomenon, is military intel. So we got military intelligence kind of working hand in hand with the White House. Uh, that's how Trump works. He likes that shit, okay? That's what he does. And we'll get back to Trump and how he works later. But um, sticking to the topic, Q Anonymous, he's a military intelligence insider. And it seems like everybody likes puzzles. So... I guess I, I should start leaving puzzles in my work so people will like try to figure it out. But uh, uh, I'm not going to leave the secrets that I know. So anyway, we're going to move right along. This is a, a topic that uh, I really don't like talking about. OK, but I will tell you, if you look at the map on Syria, uh, there, there's a lot of Mediterranean coast. And it's it, Damascus, uh, Israel, uh, Jordan, and, uh, and Gaza. You know, look, the fact of the matter is, man, they want the beach land. They want the beach land. They're doing anything to get it. So I say make them pay. If they want it, then make them pay. Don't give it to them, Trump. Don't just go over there and do the dirty work for them. You, you make them buy that aircraft from, from us and let them do that shit on their own. You hear me? All right. Sorry, Mr. President. Didn't mean to be disrespectful or out of tone with you. But hey, look, check this out. We're going to go back up here, Syria. Uh, and, and here's the quote. When blood's in the streets, when the blood's in the streets, it's a good time to buy real estate. So, so there's your, your little thing to research. This is where you're going to have to look. Uh, you find out who's buying the land in Syria uh, with all this devastation. And, and that's how it goes. It's how it's always been. These guys will play both sides. And they will work for the U.S. They will work for Israel. And then they will... work for Syria, and then they will end up being safe, keeping themselves safe because they're playing all sides of the triangle. And then uh, when everybody ends up dead, they come in and buy the real estate. So this is all just, a, this is what happened in World War II, and this is just a little bit more of the same old history coming up at you again. But this, this, is in the news, but this isn't. Nigeria. Now, some shit went down in Nigeria just within the last month. And uh, I'm not saying it, that's what started anything. I'm just saying we had U.S. troops in Nigeria and nobody even knew about it. The congressmen didn't even know about it. You're anybody, uh, only the Pentagon. But anybody as in official capacity don't know about Nigeria. But I'm going to tell you, all you got to do is go to this Vice 
HBO Nigeria report. The, the Vice is probably one of the best channels on YouTube and you're gonna probably wanna subscribe to them. So I'm gonna put the link in the description and you're gonna see a video. It's gonna explain why gas prices are gonna start to go up. They're ruining their land over this gasoline and you're probably not even using your gas properly. So, Nigeria, it's hot, bro. This is the hottest story right now. And it won't be in the news. They're not going to put it on the news. You know what they're doing? They, the Shell, or, Shell, Shell Oil, the Shell Oil Company went over there and they was drilling and this and that. And uh, they basically was robbing the people blind and shipping the oil. But then they decided to let it go because the price of oil was too low. And now that America has resources and we're mining and that pipeline went through, now we want to sell our oil on the open market. So they decided to get rid of the Nigerian uh, counterpart uh, of Shell Oil. And then, uh, so that's bad business, bro. Bad business. They, get, they got sued. They paid $85 million. And this is just like another George Soros thing where... A billionaire will spend a hundred million to get the end result. You see what I'm saying? He's playing both sides of the market. Whether it goes up or down, he's going to put his money where he wants it and he's going to make money at the end of this whole deal. So Shell Oil is kind of like, uh, I don't want to say uh, boycott them, but did I say boycott? Yeah. So think about where you get your oil and uh, or your gas. And if you're going to the Shell Oil station, uh, if it's convenient, I mean, you're going to do it, so do it. But if you have a choice, uh, if you have a choice, don't use them. But it doesn't really matter because they're all owned by the same person, right? Everybody knows that. It's uh, uh, Rockefellers uh, or Rothschilds. You know, those guys are like the same. They're both untouchable. But anyway, the, the petroleum business in Nigeria is on fire dude it's on fire i mean you you wait till you see this this report by uh the vice or vice on on youtube so that that's that's like it's devastating because uh the oil companies left all that shit and 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 there's little refineries and their towers and uh you put uh you put the crude oil in there and then uh, you end up uh, putting a flame underneath it and then it evaporates and starts boiling and then it'll go up and then the, like the top is the vapors but it, it condenses and, and it'll come out gasoline and then lower than that will be diesel. So and then anything lower than that it's heavier it comes out crude and then it kind of just leaves you with a big mess of black tar and some nasty chemicals at the bottom that we usually turn into like petroleum products for, you know, that shit you squirt and it plugs holes and stuff like that. So, but over there in Nigeria, they're just using it to get the kerosene. They're using it to get the gasoline and the diesel. So, so it's kind of bad because, uh, they're taking the old black tar stuff and they're throwing it under there and then they just throw, uh, some gasoline on it and strike a match and then boom and then so it leaves this big black plume of smoke coming up and then the, all the ground all around these little oil oil air producing areas uh they're just saturated with gasoline and tar and and it's oh man it's despicable and you got no choice but to feel bad for the nigerian people who are getting ripped off by this they've they've ruined their land and now they, they go do this they, on the boats, they go up the river, and then they bring back some bottles and order their jugs, you know, and they do it whatever the way, they're just very creative on getting this stuff back. And then they bring it to their city to just make enough money to, to eat and keep the commerce rolling because uh, if you don't have no gasoline, you can't really go anywhere and you've got plenty of trucks and vehicles, but if you have no fuel, it's a, it's a problem. So, especially when you try to get food. And then they're ruining the land, the land's all ruined, and they ruined the river uh, because what's going on is the Nigerian government is working with, 
I don't know if it's Trump, but I would say they're working with uh, the U.S. And they're, uh, so we're good. we went in there, we trained them some military guys, and, and now they got the uniforms. We outfitted them a little bit. And then they go in there and they uh, are trying to police the black marketeers, which are bringing the, uh, making the crude or burning the crude and, and bringing it back to the city as kerosene and diesel and stuff to keep the food on the table. But what's happening now is these guys from the Nigerian government have went uh, to, um, they go out to these locations and then they, they, they burn them themselves, but they destroy the equipment. Uh, any product that they have remaining, they just knife it and put a hole in it and drain it right down into the river. So now when these guys are out there fishing with their nets, they're pulling it back up, but their nets are just bringing nothing but oil back up. And then if they eat the fish from that, their stomachs start hurting and they get massive headaches. And so their, their food supply is now disrupted because they used to have clean, beautiful river, but now they got an oil river and it, it's, it's, it's nasty. So just one last thing or one last time and then we'll move on to that. It's the Vice Report. The link's in the description, man. It's terrible. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking. You won't hear it on the news until uh, about eight weeks is what I'm hearing. Eight weeks from today. So that's like two months. So that's going to be in the summer. The summer. Come January, I mean June and July, you are finally start hearing about it. But the shit's been going on for like years and it's terrible. All right. So, so we covered Nigeria. And my heart goes out to the people over there. And you know we have a military space force that could go anywhere in the world in 10 minutes. And we should probably clean that up. There's technology, clean burning fuel. We're not using it. It's held up in the military industrial complex. And, and they're not letting it out because they've privatized it. So now you can't even put in a Freedom of Information Act and get the info. So don't worry about all that. We're, I'm working on that. I'm working on that, man. We'll get Santa Claus back in operation here, but that's going to that's gonna be a different story. So the last thing for today's video is the Nibiru. It's hot. It's hot, man. I mean, uh, the New York Journal or Wall Street Times or whoever, anybody in the, the uh, what is it called? They call that, that uh, the Sinclair Group. Uh, they own the media all the media companies and all they have to do is put something out in the wall street journal or the washington times or post or whatever and then everybody jumps on it like it's real it's not real look don't worry don't worry about nibiru look i know the animals are acting weird here the last month i know there's water anom anomalies. I know there's a solar thing and they're making two suns, uh, uh, you know, from there to over there, there's the sun sets. There's two of them. It's like people are tripping and everybody wants to say Nibiru. The fact of the matter is Nibiru is a psyop. The Alaskan harp just went online again about 10 days ago, 15 days ago. And so the Alaskan harp is, uh, it causes a heat and uh, same with the one there, there's another one down in uh, uh, Puerto Rico. So now they're recovering across all of America and that, as you hit these waves like this and then it it'll, it'll can create an area and then that area will get that cloud cover and that weird shit and then the, the birds start tripping out. They don't want to be flying in the air because they're getting close to the to the electromagnetic field, you know, everybody like pigeons and birds, they got like something magnet in their beak for direction and stuff. And we're, we're totally jacking them on that. So, so birds are tripping out deers, raccoons, zombie raccoons. That's funny, but ra everybody knows raccoons are, they're the badass of the rodents, man. You, they're just a uh, raccoons always going to be bad. <laughs>